Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, it was one of my favorite episodes to bring to you folks on a monthly basis. That is the whiskeys and bourbons to look out for in the month of November. Run the video. All right then folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another new and exciting episode of The Whiskey Cove. Before we get into today's video, a quick plug about the lottery. And before you skip over, uh, you might wanna stick around until the end of the video where we will be releasing a new bottle on the 5,000's free subscriber giveaway. What do you need to do to be within a chance to win one of these excellent six bottles? Well, you need to be a subscriber, 100% you need to be a subscriber. And then secondly, go over to the Whiskey Co's website, go to the Shop All tab, and then select the free giveaway ticket there so you can put your name into the hat. And then just pay attention for when we do the 5,000 subscriber uh, a live event where we will draw the names there. So the bottles that we have already, the Willet Four Year Rye, All Forest that Barrel Strength Single Barrel, Weller 107 OWA, Early Times Bottle and Bond, the Brown Form and Black Cap, and then one more bottle which we'll be adding at the end of the video. So let's get these out of here, and then let's get on with the video. And don't forget to also to like the video as well, so we can boost the channel and try to get closer to the 5,000 subscribers faster, and I really do appreciate it, it costs nothing. So firstly, uh, we have some big whiskey to report uh, that's going to be available here. And we also have an update about the Buffalo Trace Antique collection that we talked a little bit about last time. But there's been more information released on it, so we will definitely talk a little bit about that. However, first up, that is the Russell's Reserve Single Rick House. So we already have a bottle up there. The MSRP in the old one is $250. This one has gone up to $300 with the excellent success that they had. Camp Nelson F, matured on flows four and five, the Russell's Reserve single Rick House, that is. So this is gonna be coming in at 58.8% alcohol, or 117.6 proof. So much like a lot of the wild turkey stuff and Russell's in right around that range there as well. It's not age stated, uh, but it's believed to be in the region of 10 to 15 years. Uh, so like I said, on the fourth and fifth floors of Camp Nelson Rick Houses in Jessamine County, uh, Kentucky. So it talks a little bit about uh, that they've spent the last five years acquiring and sampling various Russell's Reserve single barrel and Kentucky spirit bottlings from Camp Nelson's F Rick House. Uh, and they've never had a bad one, they've said. So this is like a, almost like a honey warehouse, if you like. Uh, they said, granted, some are better than others, uh, but each has something special to offer. From barrels aged eight to 13 years, from both floors, fifth and six, there's a world of amazing profiles to discover. And in terms of consistency and quality and complexity, I'd argue Camp Nelson uh, F Warehouse is seldom to beat there. So a big statement there, uh, that basically anything you get from Camp Nelson, whether it's the single barrel picks, you definitely want to keep a hold of because they're saying it's uh, everything comes out is excellent whiskey from there. For $300 though, I, I, don't, I can't do it. I know I did it last year for two. I paid $325 at the door for the old one. So I don't know what this one's going to be in Colorado. It's going to be closer to $400. I just can't do it. I'm just going to have to try it at a bar. Or hopefully, uh, if I can trade for it, you know, maybe like give up like a stag or well, a fall proof or something like that, you know, to switch with some of the local people here in Colorado. I'll try to do that, but I'm not going to be paying the $300 because that is a crazy amount of money for whiskey. And it's a shame that uh, everything's starting to go that way now. But however, that was the 2023 release of Camp Nelson Single Rickhouse by Wild Turkey or Russell's there. Next up, we're going down to Clermont, Kentucky, and that is because we're stopping on by the Jim Bean Distillery. They are coming back, or they're bringing out, I should say, the limited old overhauled cast strength 10 year rye. So I believe that they had, uh, they brought out an 11 year in 2021, uh, and then that stopped. Uh, but then they're bringing it back with a 10-year age statement on it. Uh, this is going to be a limited release, so I think it's going to be a very similar uh, run like they did to the one in 2021. Uh, so the one, this is going to be at least 51% rye the mash bill, as we don't quite know. Uh, it's non-disclosed, but we, obviously it's a rye, so it has to be at least 51%. A value of how much it is, uh, so the 11 year in 2021 was costing us $75 for this old overhaul rye. So maybe it might be in somewhere in that region. Yes, this is 10 years, so it's not gonna go down in price because inflation's gone crazy on whiskey. I don't want it to be closer to 100. If it's $75, I will definitely look for it and pick it up. 
and I think this will be a really nice ball to try. I haven't really tried much of Jim Bean Rye at all, if anything. Nothing really jumps out that I can think of. I have this like old Jim Bean Rye back here, but in terms of like actual rye distillate from Jim Bean, I don't think I've tried many. Maybe some of the Basil Hayden's rye, uh, and there's probably someone screaming something at the camera that obvious that I'm missing, but I don't, I don't think so. If you look at the back label here, it reads a single year, a single place in every drop. In 2012, we land, uh, we laid down rye in our unique Escalator Warehouse V. People are just coming up with all these names for these warehouses that they have now, right? A decade later, a decade later, we selected the best to be blended and bottled, cast strength and unfiltered. This Kentucky style rye is the result spice depth and unmistakable overhauled character so like i said for 75 dollars i'll try to get it uh but we'll see what happens with that uh, like i said i really would be interested to try some jim bean rye distillate there so that was the old overhauled which is a bit of a mouthful cast strength and just quick note it does say cast strength but then on the label it says 40 percent abv so I, I, it might vary in, uh, i know that like stuff like mick does vary every so often so maybe they just put 40 percent to just like a, a just like a, a catch-all but uh it, we, what you might see is that it might vary from batch to batch or bottle to, to bottle so we are going to frankfurt kentucky because buffalo trace are bringing out something quite unique and quite fun if you ask me and that is because they are thrilled to announce the Prohibition Collection, an annual limited release multi ball collection honoring the whiskies that were legally produced and sold at the distillery during the arguably, arguably the most contentious time period in alcohol history. Known then as George T. Stagg Distillery, the debut, uh, the debut releases tributes five Prohibition era brands that have until now disappeared. So they're going to be coming in like retro bottles. The only draw, well, there's a couple of drawbacks, but the only drawback is that they're going to be like pint size, 375 milliliter is going to be the size. So then the whiskies that they're going to be in this collection are going to be Old Stag, Golden Wedding, Three Fevers, Walnut Hill, and then George T. Stag, the Spiritus Frementi. Uh, Latin, I think that sounds like. Uh, so yeah, the old stag, which is the one that is going to be in here, is a barrel proof, 66.2% ABV, uncut and unfiltered. But the golden wedding is going to be 107 proof, 107 proof rye or 53.5% ABV. Uh, heavy rye tasting on the nose, uh, herbal tasting on the palate. Uh, the Three Feathers is going to be 100 proof, 50% ABV, bottled in Bond whiskey, uh, bottled in Bond bourbon whiskey, created by Maf Buffalo Trace Master Distiller Drew Mayville. Our Walnut Hill is going to be a 90 proof or 45% ABV, high rye bourbon. And then lastly, the George T. Stag is going to be a 55% ABV or 110 proof wheated bourbon honoring the medicinal whiskey produced at the george t stag distillery and i hope you know I'll, I'll obviously post the pictures you can see on the screen and then just looking at the bottles here uh, I, li I like retro things uh, i think this is a fun and cool idea i'm hoping that uh you know if i can get hold of them i will definitely try and get them but like i said you know uh, the chances are probably going to be small it is going to be an annual release you never know the other drawbacks are that it's going to run $1,000, so it's $200 a bottle for a pint size. So essentially you're paying $400 a bottle, and that's one of the more expensive stuff to ever come out of uh, the Buffalo Trace distillery. Uh, even when you get into the Buffalo Trace collection, uh, like the regular George T. Stag full size is like 100 bucks. Yes, the Papi Mamenkel 23 is like three, dollars $400 MSRP, but still that's a 23-year-old whiskey. So this is quite expensive and I feel like they might be taking a little bit uh, advantage of the market because that's what people are willing to pay for whiskey. Uh, but it's definitely going to be more like a collector's thing. Uh, but I would love to just get it and get into these whiskeys because, you know, they're completely new whiskeys from Buffalo Trace Distillery. So they're going to be pretty fun and exciting. Move it on and we're coming to Colorado and that is Fort Collins, Colorado, because we're going to the Old Elk Distillery there. So Old Elk are bringing out a cigar cut. So they've already done one batch of this, and then this is gonna be their second release. So the second release is gonna be different to the first one. So the first one was finished uh, in sherry, armagnac, port, and cognac barrels. So this is just their blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished in there. But the second one, however, uh, and they're calling this the island blend. So this is gonna be uh, straight whiskeys finished in port, saltiness, 
sherry and rum barrel so that's kind of where they're getting the island name if you like there as well so then if we read the back label here it goes on to say that each old elk cigar cutter represents the best of the best from our award wing and winning cast finish project the cigar cut island blend features a novel blend of old elks base whiskies including a high rye malt strip bourbon whiskey straight wheat whiskey and straight rye whiskey each of which is brought forward with distinct finishes from the port so those whiskies that they mentioned there are finished in different barrels so it's a blend of their different whiskies but each one of those blend uh, each one of those whiskies are finished in something different and then they're all blended back in and i'll explain here so the base whiskey uh, the old elk six year high malt bourbon is finished in sherry and port uh, sherry for two years and then port for six to ten months and then the old elk six year rye is finished in rum for eight months and then the old elk six year wheat is finished in salt in this barrels for six months so there's a lot going on and pick apart here uh, i think the regular finish whiskey uh, from old elk runs at about a hundred dollars so probably expect this to be more closer to something like 150 dollars here so we'll just have to wait and see it sounds super interesting i really need to maybe get a more into cigar blend whiskey or cigar finishes if you like because the ones that I've tried have been really good and really unique and very well done. Joseph Magnus, the Copper Sky one that I have as well. Uh, so I might have to pick that up. But the only drawback with cigar finished whiskies is that they usually run quite expensive. Because as you can tell, you know, they finish in a bunch of different things. So then moving on, we are going down to Woodford Reserve. Because it's that time of year when they bring out their batch proof, uh, their batch proof release. So this one this year is coming in at 62.35% ABV or 124.7 proof. So this is available in Colorado right now. And I know a liquor store actually has it right now that I can go and pick up. But they're asking $150 for it. And that might be right, right around where MSRP is right now. I think it uh, depends where you go. Sometimes you'll see you know, people posting pictures of these at like Costco for like $120. But I feel like it's probably going to be more closer to $150. The, uh, the mash bill on this is going to be 72% corn, 18% rye, and then 10% malted barley. Woodford Reserve going to say that blending barrels into a batch and then bottling the whiskey is actually proof straight from the barrels. Batch proof is created using the same grain bill and process as Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. The 2023 edition is 124.7 proof. So then they also go on to say the batch proof, however, takes on Woodford Reserve's trademark flavor range, sweet vanilla and toasted oak to a whole new level. So, like I said, I've never bought one of these before just because they're quite expensive. Because I've always favored stuff like Old Forester single barrel, barrel strengths for like $80, $90. If I can, I'm quite fortunate that sometimes I can pick up a Stag Junior and they're normally like $60, $70. So I'll, I'll usually reach for them instead of this. Brown Foreman, uh, which owns Woodford Reserve, their distillate and their flavor profiles is right up my street. So maybe I just need to rip the band-aid off or see what I can trade to people or hopefully if I can find someone who's trying to be willing to trade maybe for a stag, I guess, at that point. We will just have to wait and see, but excited. Nevertheless, I know people like these a lot. And I think last year's edition was pretty good there as well. So then lastly, moving on, let's talk a little bit about the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection here. So uh, Papa Winkle is coming out at the same time as well, but there's going to be no changes with that. There hasn't really been for a while. You have the rye, you have the 10, 12 year, uh, then you also have the 15 and then 20 and 23. So that is all coming out this year. But where a lot of the changes coming out is going to be in the antique collection, because there's a lot of stuff that changes with that year to year. So then firstly, Eagle Rest 17. 17 representing 17 year old. However, this time is gonna be the oldest distillate since they started doing the Eagle Rare 17. And this is coming in at 19 years, just over 19 years. So you get an extra two years. Uh, this is coming in at 101 proof for 50.5% ABV. And then the George T Stag this year is coming in at 67.5% ABV or 135 proof. And this is almost 15 and a half years old. So a lot of age and a lot of proof. And if it's anything like the one last year, it's going to be a real hitter. And then William LaRue Wheated Bourbon is coming in at 66.8% ABV or 133.6 proof and putting it just over 12 years of age as well. So decent amount of age for 12 years and then a big, big ABV punch with 66.8% ABV. 
The Sazerac Rye, which is an 18 year old rye, coming in at 45% ABV or 90 proof. Again, you know, it, this is, it didn't say it was anything older than 18 years, so I assume this is just 18 years here as well. And then lastly, the Thomas Handy Rye. Uh, this is coming in at 62.45% ABV and 124.9 proof. Again, wasn't really able to find uh, the age on this one, so I'm not quite sure what the Handy sits at, but uh, we'll just kind of have to taste it and go from that. When I say we, probably not me or you but you never know it's that time of year go hunting folks continue to make relationships that you have been throughout the year make sure you enter into lotteries and just cross your fingers and hope for the best so 125 dollars is usually the msrp for this sort of stuff but uh, expect to pay well over that as we get gouged and stuff gets marked up but you never know some local stores here in colorado when they do the lotteries they sell the stuff for msrp so i really do appreciate that as well so with that being said let's let you folks know at home who stuck around to know what is the next ball coming into the lottery so yes this is a little bit early but i really want to get the 5,000 subscribers by christmas so we can get these bottles to people by christmas because i think that would be super cool there as well so with that being said the fifth bottle that we'll be doing on the free giveaway is e.h taylor small batch so kind of uh, a solid bottle for you folks at home. It is bottled in bond, 100% ABV, 100% proof or 50% ABV. And I think that it's a great taste in whiskey and what a bottle for someone to win uh, as a free giveaway. So make sure you are subscribed and signed up for that. Like, comment and enjoy your days off here as we get closer to Christmas and closer to 5,000 subscribers. As we say on this channel, as you drink through the world's whiskeys, one glass at a time. Cheers.